Hello there, folks, and welcome to the stream. My name is Mike D'Angelo, a.k.a. That Tells Guy. Uh, I wanted to give you a real quick apology for being a, a smidge late. I, uh, I actually got to do something a little cool uh, earlier this evening. I, uh, I did a coaching session uh, with another author who is uh, learning some of the steps to, uh, to kind of expand her marketing reach and use some of the tools that we're using here, like Incarnate and World Anvil and things like that. And, uh, and we got very excited about the things that we were talking about, and we, we ran over by a minute or two. But I'm here now. We are going to spend a little bit of time on two maps today. Uh, the first map that we're going to be looking at is actually one of these smaller modular maps that I've made in the past. Um, specifically, we're going to be looking at what it looks like to expand it. Um, my brother has a bunch of maps that were made in like an old template style, and uh, we're trying to get to that point where pretty much all the maps that we make are that 40 by 20. Uh, so like anytime you see one of my maps on Patreon, any of the times that you see the maps that I'm making on Twitch, they are all that 40 by 20 style. And we want to make sure that there's a way for him to convert the, uh, the old things that he has into, you know, uh, a way that he can use them. So I think based on one of the tools that incarnate has we should be able to do that i actually was in the reason that this kind of came up is in the process of researching um docks and harbors and stuff like that i believe that i found the tool that we can use and it's part of the the hamburger menu up here if you come up you can see where it says resize map new map from region so what we should be able to do and this is me testing. I don't know for sure because I haven't done it except for live. Uh, what we should be able to do is uh, take an existing map that we have and resize it to expand the area that we have. So what we're going to do is first identify the pixel size, the pixel count that we're going to have for our map in HD. Um, actually, we might not even have to do HD. We might just be able to do standard. But standard is 2048 by 1024. I'm going to real quick make a note of that on my other screen just because my brain is thoroughly fried from all the stuff that I've been doing. So the other map that I'm going to be showing you, um, not the template map that we were just looking at, but these four-way modulars, they were done uh, because I wanted to see if I could do a map in um, the other mouse pad size that we play with. So predominantly what I'm working on is um, these 36 by 18 inch mouse pads and they just they work really well for the battle maps. We lose a little bit of stuff off the left side and, um, and that's something that I feel I can live with. But what we're going to try and do here is... Oh, one second. Sorry, I got a message from another thing. I'm just closing that out so it's not a distraction. Um, so one of the things that I want to do is be able to take this style of map and expand on it if I needed to. So if I come up here and I go to resize map, new map from region, in theory, like if I only wanted to take like this area here, I could do that. But I don't want to do that. What I would re really like to do is instead of a you know 504... Uh, the, the 722 702 what i really want to do is take the zone and expand it to 2048 by 1024. so i think that's where we end up at the uh the spot that we were at before where we're actually going to have to double that because we're looking at hd so it should be 4096 and 2048. So now that is basically what we're trying to do. We're trying to take that and expand on that. So one of the things that you can do is you can use the snap to grid tool. We'll get a little bit closer to the center. I would have to unsnap it at that point and then move it over a little bit. Hoping that we got it right. Um, realistically, what I could probably do at some point is math it out so that the top and the left were arranged the right way. So 
in theory, it should be 10, 24. That brings me to a perfect center there. Um, let's see. So if the bottom there brings me to... Oh, here. Let's snap to the grid one more time. And then we'll take it off. The... So because of the way that we were snapped, this ended up screwing up a little bit, so I have to move that back to 4096. And we need to move this to negative 1024. So at this point, we know that the top is negative 216, so we actually have to cut that in half and make it negative 108. And then that is a perfect center for our map. So if we hit confirm, and we're, we're making a new map, so we don't have to worry about you know, anything going missing or anything like that. If we hit save and proceed, it's going to load a new map for us, but it's going to keep the content that we had in the center. And it should have, basically, I'm guessing dirt. Yep, here we go. So the system knows where I drew off the screen. So it kind of keeps that stuff present. So you can see there's... A lot of schmutz. At some point there was water that I drew in here and things like that. But at this point, I have the map that I need. Um, the grid probably needs to be offset because you can see here we've got half the grid here. We've got half the grid here. Um, what I would need to do is go in here and change the offset. Zero. Actually fixed everything up right. The grid itself is still the wrong size because we, we won't save this, but I know now that we have the capability of doing this. This is really supposed to be 40 by 20. I think if I bump it up to 40, it automatically bumped it up to 20. Everything really looks great to this point still. So, let's see, did we actually preserve? Yeah, I mean, it preserved everything that was in this map beforehand. So actually what we're going to do is we'll save this as a clone. Um, we'll do because this actually gives me something that I can work with. So Matt, were you uh, were you able to see what I just did or did you show up a little bit later? Ah, well, you know, so this video is the video that I made for you. Um, so within, you know, the first five minutes of this video, well, I, I, I took the small map that I made and I expanded it to show you how to do the, um, the jumbo size map. So what I was talking to you about at the, uh, the party on Sunday, we should definitely be able to do it. Um, we can look at this map together, like this stream a little bit later, and I'll show you again what I did. I swear to God, it worked. <laughs> um, so, so this, like what you're seeing, well, you're not seeing anything on the screen right now, right? You're just listening. I did see you say, can't watch you for the moment. Just finally home. Yeah, I think you just, oh, okay. So yeah, this, so everything that you see like in the black, that was the medium map that I had for a template for the, the modular. And then everything you see out here is what brings it into that jumbo size map. So just a real quick look at like what, what was capable to happen. So um, I won't keep you. Go walk your dogs. But just to say that it is possible we would be able to take some of the early maps that you made and resize them properly. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll coach you. I had coaching earlier this morning or earlier this evening. I'll, uh, I'll do a coaching session with you over Discord or something like that and show you how to do this as well. Uh, we'll do it live with one of your maps. We can even stream it if you want. But... I will. Uh, I, I just saved this map. We're going to go and um, take the second map of the day and um, and work on that. So I will uh, actually. I'm going to have myself on intermission for like five minutes because at this point I've been talking for an hour and fifteen minutes straight. I'm going to like suck on a cough drop <laughs> for a few minutes and get my voice back. Um, and then in that time, I'll also bring up the, the pre map grid that we did the other day for the Harbor map. And we'll start to work on that today as well. So bear with me for probably like five minutes 
Um, I'm going to put myself on the intermission tab and then we will be right back. <laughs> All right, right there, folks. I am back. I am actually going to uh, turn my fan on a little bit. If anybody who's listening feels that it's too loud, let me know. Um, the first hour up here wasn't so bad, but because I'm up here for two hours consecutively, I just want to make sure that I'm staying cool. I had a former coworker of mine who let me know that he went to like a concert this past weekend and he's got like brutal sun poisoning to the point where like he was dehydrating and like fatigued and weak and everything like that um it's not like super hot or anything right now but i want to make sure that i'm not being an idiot so uh, what i'm going to do now is you can see that i'm in photoshop right now this is what we actually worked on last week and I am specifically going to grab our green zone down here. You can see I'm getting into crop mode. 
And I'm just grabbing the green guy. We're not going to save anything, but... Well, we're not going to save the original document. We are going to save this as a copy real quick. Go back to planning. Go to Hidden Harbor. And we'll save this as a JPEG real quick. You know what? Let's do one little change on here before we move into that. So we have all the screen delete it so that we have a nice, I think, is that alpha? Now it is. So we're going to bring that in. That's, it's so simple, but I want to make sure that people are kind of aware that this is what you can do. So you can do your pre-planning, bring stuff like this in, and it makes life a lot easier. So we're going to do Hidden Harbor Docks. And let's call it grid or something like that. Oh, doesn't need to be a JPEG, needs to be a ping. Because we need that alpha layer. This is why it pays to be cool. So your brain doesn't melt. So the ping will make sure that we've got like that semi-transparent look. It'll make it easier for us to play with the grid and things like that. So now on here. What we'll do is go to the Versali. Well, we don't need that template. We could use this template down here, the custom battle map size. Um, but either one would work um, because they're both the same size and they're pretty basic. And we're just going to cover it with water anyway. So what we'll do is clone this. We'll call it Hidden Harbor Docks. And this map is going to be done in such a way where we don't really need to mask anything. Like, there's not going to be, like, a layer mask. Because there's not going to be anything on that top layer besides the boat, which is an object anyway. So, we should be able to keep everything like this. And we're in shallow water. So, we'll do... We'll use this, and then if we need to, we'll make some changes with that other style. We're going to actually and big in this as far as we can and that'll make sure that we uh, re realistically I could have done like the fill but this will be fine for now and the nice thing about this is if we change the size later it will take into account that I went off the map so we're going to bring in that stamp so we're going to upload and we're going to go to the new 3x3 zones, planning, hidden harbor, and grab that grid real quick. Save that stamp and go grab it. It is going to be a, a busy day for me today, too, because right from here, I'm going to go into playing some Sea of Stars. I played that for about an hour this morning. Um, my goal is to try and find the character that I, uh, like, basically purchased uh, the appearance of in the Kickstarter. But my thought is that he's probably very, very, very far into the game. So we're going to have to figure out just how far that is. So, we know that we're going to be playing with the docks. Hey, Meatball! So let's go to Fantasy Battle Maps. And we've got these boards that we can use, and we have these ship things that we can use for the docks. Um, let's play with the largest one real quick. 30 has been the, the number that I feel like works for us the most. Hello, Jill! So the nice thing about that is when you hold shift down, you've got the uh, the nice tilt, and I feel like that puts us right where we need to be. Now, I terminated this before we actually go off the map or anything like that, but we are going to keep extending it because it needs to land on you know, the actual ground on the map above. 
So we'll do two side-by-sides like that. I feel like that kind of tells the story that we want to tell. Um, one of the things is we're going to lock this down so we don't have to worry about that. And now that these are side-by-side -side and we're not grabbing the entire map layer, we should be able to paste them in there like that. Now we had said um, we liked another of the maps that we saw, but they had more of a stone docks look, and I didn't really like that for Hidden Harbor, because Hidden Harbor is a little bit more rustic. Um, you know, it's a little bit more, not primitive, but it's just not as put together as that person's docks were. But what we have here is pretty, pretty darn good. Um, and what we can do is kind of expand off of this. But let's do this first. We're going to copy everything that we have. This will be pretty sim uh, symmetric. One more time. All right, so that gives us what we have here. And what we're going to do is start to select some of these and group them up so that they're not a huge part of what we're working on. I don't want them to keep on jumping in front of us or anything like that. So we'll group and we'll rename all this left dock. And actually, we'll lock that down so I don't grab it by action. Center dock. And lock. And then we can grab everything else that way instead of actually doing a select like that. The G key will do a group for us. Right dock and lock. All right, so we've got some basics here. Let's do a save. And the next step is going to be putting some boats in this harbor. So the nice thing about what Incarnate does for you is it gives you some composite ships already and things like that. So we've got some small sailing ship composites, Oats and oats. I'll put oats on these boats if you need me to. So the galleon is going to be your biggest, I believe. Let's uh, let's actually play a little bit with these. We'll throw a couple of these on here. No, it looks like the keel one might be the bigger one. I thought galleons were pretty big. All my memories of... Uh, wow, and they just keep getting bigger. All my memories of... Sid Meier's pirates are uh, throwing me for a loop here. <laughs> oh, it sounds good. All right, so we're going to use a little bit of each of these. Um, what we'll do is we've got enough room for these ships to be on the outside of these and we'll use what we have here to expand off of these maps later. We have to give ourselves enough room so that it doesn't actually hit the harbor up here. So I'm trying to be a little bit forward thinking And the nice thing about what we just did there, putting it this far back, is it puts a lot of focus on that big ship. That would be like where the, the main focal point would be on this map. And then we've got these two smaller boats. Do a couple of fun things here. Let's do... The smaller guy here. And we'll actually do two gangplanks. But this one is specifically right here. This one's a bit further back. And uh, maybe what we'll do is when we do the next map over and we show this one, we'll have a couple of other things that we have there. 
So let's save again, just because I'm happy with the, the general layout. And the first thing that we're going to do is look and see if there's any stuff that I can do easily to throw like some sails and stuff like that on here. Because the first level that we're going to look at is, well, yeah, I'm okay with it. I was going to say, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for sails to be on these parked ships, but for the sake of um, kind of looking at you know what these ships are doing and everything, we'll say they're anchored. Although we have the anchor right there. That doesn't make a lot of sense. They've got a second anchor. <laughs> We're going to play with all of this stuff and figure it out. So this one is our bigger ship. We're going to try and see. I'm going to have to like fine-tune all this later because I don't really know what a ship should look like. Um, but we have this center sail here. And very likely what we're going to do is... F I'll, I'll do some research and find out if it makes sense to take the sail itself and kind of scrape it into Photoshop and do something over top of it. Because what I'm really trying to do, is we talked about this a little bit when we were talking about Sigil Watch yesterday on Talking Tellist. Are you playing Battleship with my map? You're a jerk. So we're going to end up putting this sigil on that big keel ship, I think it is. Did I just kill you down there? Did you laugh so hard you almost died? So we've got that one. We actually should be able to... I'm moving this one because in order to get things right, since we didn't see... Oops, since we didn't see... Well, you know what, that's fine. As long as we leave enough room to see this guy, because that's going to be like the the front mast. I'm put it right there in the middle. Grab the sail again. 30, I think, might be still a little too small, so let's do 45. So the fun thing is we're going to put these two guys together on opposite sides of the harbor. You asthma Did you asthma because of a laugh? Yes! Victory! That's way too big of a sale. So we moved... Oh, wait a minute. 30 is the happy sail there, but we want to make this one 25. We're going to shrink that down and leave that one here, about. And what we're going to do is, at some point, we're going to take these sails away. And that's going to be the... One of the variants of this map. So... Sorry, just have to readjust where I'm sitting. My knee is acting up. I don't know what I touched, but I've got the white hand of Saruman on my basketball shorts. It's, I mean, I'm touching everything else. I don't Oh, you know what it was? I know what it was. My, uh, my monitor was dusty. <laughs> I wiped it off with my hand and then touched my basketball shorts. Good times. Um... So what I was saying is we were going to take away these sails, and that's going to be one of the variants. We're going to have one where it shows the sails and everything like that. It's very expressive. And then we'll start to bring it down, and we'll see more of the details that are on the boat itself. Um, we can actually do a combination of those because we can do... Um, we can just mess with the opacity, lock them, that kind of thing. So we don't have to worry about too much of that. And we might do like an in-between where we'll go to the sales and make it like a 50% or something like that so that there's a lot of options for Game Masters. I also started to 
talk about something else before my brain fried. So Argos is going to be over here. Their arch nemesis, Peritas, is going to be over here. So if you really are running a like telest centric um, campaign or scenario or something like that, you already have a plot point that you can play with. Um, you know, maybe sailors from each of these ships are saying, hey, like we want you to sabotage something. And as the players, you get to decide are we going to do this? Are we going to do both? Are we going to do neither? Um, it'll give you a little bit of an opportunity to make long-standing enemies. Um, you can rely on allies later. Potentially, you could see who's a big old butthole, and uh, they say that they're going to do something, and then they don't, and then you realize that they're the bad guys, and you kind of became an unwitting bad guy, and all that kind of cool stuff. So, let's save for now. And now we're going to start to figure out some other stuff. I think primarily what we'll do is... Oh, son of a biscuit. No, we're fine. I thought I uh, had one of the other sails looking halfway cooked. So we're going to go to the water set. And we're going to get a couple of fishies. So we got the sharks. We'll get one of the sharks... And we're going to mess with the blend mode and see which one we like. See, the problem with screen is you lose the shadow. And that might not be totally the worst thing, just because I don't really care to have the shadow here. It is shallow water, so it makes a little bit of sense. Let's let's play with some of the other ones. Let's do... Darken doesn't look right. Multiply kind of looks okay. Let's try Multiply. And then what we'll do is we're actually going to make the shadow a little bit less intense. And we'll mess with the offset a little bit as well. So let's do... Something like that. It's it's a little bit subtler. And we're going to mess with the opacity anyway. So we're going to lose... You know what? We're probably going to go back into the shadow. And that way, the shark itself is pretty faded. But we still see a little bit of the shadow underneath. So grab that. I think I've seen, like, swirls of fishies before. Yep, we've got a school of fish over here. Um, we'll play with this over here. Probably going to have to mess with the shadows here as well. What was our shadow intensity over here? 26? And 50, and 50, and 26. I mean, like, if you really look hard, you can see that, but it's not super apparent. You don't have to worry too much about that. I'm going to leave things like the dolphins alone and stuff like that. Um, koi fish don't make a lot of sense in, like, that silver and orange variety. But what we could do is take, like, maybe this orange one or the yellow one, and we can change the hue of it and see if we like anything a little better there. And this one's actually going to go swimming underneath the dock. So let's change the hue to... Rihanna, what color should I make this guy? There's a, a little bit of a delay, I apologize. Um, so, we've got kind of like a light blue, a darker blue, kind of purplish color, a violet, uh, the regular color, which is kind of like a reddish orange. we got a little bit of a yellow there, green, and then it starts to circle back to blue. And while you're deciding, I'm going to mess with the shadow again real quick. What did I do? Oh, 
deep blue to the original blue was kind of like here. So if I zoom in, how do you like that color? What we're going to do from there is make some corals down here. I'm actually going to use like that little bit of lightness there to uh, to help me paint my coral. Yeah, I mean, once you get, like, deeper underwater, like, the color red starts to go away and everything. So, like, you would only see that in, like, a shallow pond or something like that. Um, let's do something like that. I feel like they don't really give you too many coral options. That little like pink rose looking thing above. That's weird. It's like almost the exact same position. grab what we have and change some colors up. Throw that there. Go into it. And let's see if we can do... I actually kind of like that pink color, but maybe we'll desaturate it a smidge. Now it looks like chewing gum. And I'm about it. Same thing here. We're going to change the color and see if uh, that helps us feel a little bit more varied. I kind of want that one to be underneath that one. Gives a little bit more presence. And let's see. So I feel like these are supposed to be like anemones. So let me see if I can color that. Well, an anemone wouldn't really be a coral, but I want it to look like that anyway. So let's see if we can just tweak that a little bit. The rosy ones up there. What color haven't we played too much with? It's got a more green kind of color in here. And now we're going to kind of close it off this way. We'll have it kind of be like diamond shaped. So 
We've got this one that we've done, this one. We didn't do this one in a different color yet. Let's make that one fiery red. And that one over here. And over here. And let's head back into these brain coral looking ones. Change the color of that one. We keep on going down, so we'll go bring this to 20. Let's go in the opposite direction for this one. Something like that, but we are going to make it a little brighter and a little bit more desaturated. Again, I want that to, like, since it's smaller, kind of have less presence in this ecology. Grab one of these guys again. Change the color again. So we did a green and a blue. Can we do like a yellowy kind of color? I kind of like that. That works. I'm probably going to end up changing the opacity of these all, too. Let's go for this one one more time. So that was more of a green last time. Let's do... Something like that. And just one or two more things ought to fill that in nicely. See what the originals look like again. Let's grab another blue and throw that in there, and then that I think looks nice. Made it crazy darn busy, but that's our coral reef. I don't know why I said it like that. Coral reef. All right, we're gonna group these together. Should make it easier to play with. And at this point, we're going to grab everything all at once. And are we able to mess with the opacity here? Yes, we are. I feel like 75% is nice. Let's see what we did for the fishish. That shark is humongous. We're going to have to turn that down a bit. So we did... 50% for the shark, so let's bring this closer to 50. 65 is good. The shark is... I mean, close to darn... 80 feet <laughs> squared. So let's move him a little closer to... It's a big shark still. But it's about... 10 feet. Still a big shark. Don't get me wrong. Should not have been 30%. Alrighty. Let's lock down the coral reef. We're going to name it so that we can easily find it later. Unlock it. And the nice thing, too, is if we don't like where it is here, we can always move it later. So the next thing that we're going to do is go back to... Oh, never mind. It's in water. I was going to say we were going to get some seagulls, but we can find them right here. So we're going to put a couple of these in some strategic places. Some of them will be flying. We want them to have a decent amount of presence because we are going to steal what that other gentleman did, and we're going to have some birdie poops in a couple of places. This fish also needs to come down in size. And actually, 
fishies like to travel in teams. Let's real quick verify that the shadow intensity carried over. So 50, 50, 26. 50, okay, so everything's fine there. We might change that a little bit later because I saw the shadow went a little bit too far, but it's okay for now. Gonna do a couple more of these ones that are just kind of lingering at various places. All right, I feel like that's enough seagulls for now. Save it again. Uh, I'll probably get off in about four minutes just to give us a little bit of time to chat in case we need to, and then I'll head downstairs and play a little bit of Sea of Stars. But in the meantime, let's go back to the ship and see if there's any, like, crates or anything that we can use. Yeah, that looks like it's mostly the, the ships itself. What about figureheads? I see we got the one over here. Let's move it to 30. Did we? I gotta see if the seagulls were uh, screwed up opacity wise. So the fun thing about this is definitely the uh, the angle is gonna come into play. So that's forty five. That's 315, which is negative 45, so that's okay. And we're going to move it down so that it's below the bowsprit. Well, technically it is the bowsprit, but you know what I'm talking about. So let's lock both of those down real quick. Where'd you go? That was weird. I don't know why it was hiding down there. But that's okay. Alright, so we, we put that there. We're going to have both of these uh, ships over here. So maybe this is also an Argosian ship. Um, this one over here is going to be from Paratus. This one over here will be from somewhere completely different. So we'll figure out something else to do there. And let's see if we can't find some crates. Doesn't have to be in the ship. So actually, we've got these pirate crates that kind of feel a little bit more in line with where we're going. But with that in mind, maybe we use this one as our pirate ship, and this one will have stuff in and around it that uh, that feels a little bit more in in, uh, in line with the the feeling that we're going for. Now they're pirates, but they're not stupid. So they've got things meticulously situated. These guys that took a little bit of damage, they're a little further up. And the fun thing about this is, in theory, because we've got pirates, that could add another level of kind of craziness in whatever's going on. So this is a fun one. So the composite itself... Yeah, I was thinking it would be really cool if the composite was 
if it left enough room for something like that there, but I don't think that it's going to. And I think there's no way for us to put that there where it doesn't look like it overlays. So we're not going to be able to do that. That would have been fun. For now, we're just going to keep this on the ship in a couple of places. Stack there. It's fine. That adds a little layer of whatever's going on there. The problem with these crates is, like, I feel like we should be able to see something in them. And again, we're going to run into the same problem that we uh, ran into with the hold. We're not going to be able to see anything a layer down. We might be able to do... So we couldn't do it with opacity, but I wonder if we can do it with... Um, let's try it with a blend mode. Yeah, none of that really does the job that I want it to. Let's see. I wonder if I can do like a combo, if it'll look the right way. I, I mean, I still see it over top of the netting of that crate, so it's not doing what I need it to, which is unfortunate. I'll have to do a little bit of thinking about what I want that to do, and see if there's anyone who's done that an appropriate way. Let's save, and we'll keep what we have for now, and, uh, and we'll expand on it later if we need to. We definitely need to. I'll be doing this again tomorrow. Um... But that's where we'll stop for now. Um, I will leave the chat open for a minute or two in case anybody who's on right now wants to chat for a moment or two before I go downstairs. We've been doing a lot of stuff with the sea because I'm going to be going downstairs and playing Sea of Stars. I would love a Shocky Milk. And in two days, I believe that I should be playing Starfield. Uh, Thursday, it's going to be a good day for gaming because we're going to hear a little bit more about the new Mario game that's coming out in October. I suspect that we're going to be seeing a September Direct as well, and I'm wondering whether or not we'll uh, whether or not that'll coincide with news about their new console. It may be too early, uh, but they did just announce that uh, the Switch officially overtook the Wii as uh, one of their best-selling consoles of all time. I don't think that it uh, did anything compared to like the DS, and I think it technically still has to beat the 360 and the PS2. But uh, certainly a step in the right direction for the Switch. And, um, and just because whatever the succeeding console is, it doesn't mean that the Switch will stop selling. They'll just sell it cheaper and, uh, and catch all the people who are not able to get the new system. So... We'll have to see where that goes. All right, I will. Uh, we'll, we'll use this as our our closing time. I am going to. Let's see. Burr, 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 burr. Give me one second. Readjust myself. And let's go over to our show closing page. Um, so, one of the first places that you can find me and all my stuff is on Telus.com. We just did a pretty big uh, change to that to include Wild Magic, which came out earlier this month. Uh, it reached a milestone earlier today where it cracked a, uh, a certain amount sold, which made me very happy. Uh, it's the first trilogy that we've done in a while, so uh, I want to give a round of applause to Adelia for being, doing such a good job. Um, you can also find these battle maps on patreon.com slash to see all my streams live, you can be sure to check me out here on twitch.tv slash thattelusguy. To see all the streams that I've ever done, you can check me out on YouTube at youtube.com slash atworldoftelist. Uh, that's for the maps and also talking telist. For our video game-related content, you can go to thatentertains.com, 
or you can go to the That's Entertainment YouTube, which I still need to play a little bit of catch up with. Uh, that is youtube.com slash at That's Entertainment Games. And to find all of our awesome merchandise, including high quality mouse pads, handcrafted magic wands, battle maps, posters, and more, you can head to our shop at etsy.com slash shop slash Telst. Uh, Rihanna wanted to make sure that I told you about her TikTok for our doggies. That is Full House of Fluff. And uh, also, you can check out anything wand related from Rihanna at www.weirdwitchwands.com. That's spelled W Y R D, weird. Uh, so, I am going to wrap this up. I'm going to take a five minute break or so, and then I will be playing uh, Sea of Stars on the Xbox in a few minutes. So, I'll see you down there soon.